Welcome to BlizzCast 16. I'm Rob Simpson, and today I'll be talking with some of the World of Warcraft developers about Rage of the Firelands in the upcoming 4.2 patch. We'll be discussing some of the bosses waiting for you there, solo progression, the new shiny loot you can earn, and some of the new tools at your disposal. So let's jump right in. And now we're going to get this BlizzCast kicked off with Tom Chilton, the game director for World of Warcraft. Hey there. So Tom, I'd, I'd like you to, to maybe catch up people on what's going on in this 4-2 patch coming up. What's happening in Azeroth right, right. now? Well, really it's the continuation of the storyline that we established in the Hyjal zone. For anyone that's gone through Hyjal, uh, you go through Hyjal and kind of discover that Ragnaros is, has partnered up with the, um, with the, the Twilight's Hammer cult and because they're all about you know controlling the elements and that kind of thing, bringing destruction to the world, and and Ragnaros is pretty on board with that yeah. plan too. So uh, you know he's ever since his beat down in Molten Core, he's mm -hmm. been sort of prepping himself, and now he's joined up with Twilight's Hammer, and he sent all these forces into Mount Hyjal to to take it on. Um, as a player, you probably you know helped put out the yeah. uh, invasion there, uh, put that down, and now you're gonna take the fight to his home front by you know going to Sulfuron keep in the Firelands. Okay, cool. And now, so now that Ragnaros is back, is that something that you guys have been pretty excited about? Like, planning for a while? I yeah, mean, Ragnaros yeah. was awesome, and now right. to have him back is... Definitely. I mean, Cataclysm has a lot of nostalgic elements to it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was, in a lot of ways, part of the theme of it, right, is bringing, bringing back some of the stuff that we've done in the past that was really cool, but in a way that's totally new and different, right? The, the new Ragnaros, mechanically, from a gameplay perspective, has essentially nothing to do with the old, right? So, right. Uh, but at the same time, it's Ragnaros. It's a, it's a, it's a name that the players are familiar with, that kind of thing. So we're really excited to bring that back and, and help carry that forward. And so on, on that note of retrofitting Ragnaros in, mm -hmm. into this current day Azeroth, what were some of the challenges that you guys right. uh, ran into? Well, uh, there's the legs, right? Mm -hmm. he, uh -huh. In this particular we, encounter, he's got legs. heavy feet, right? <laughs> so we're, we're having to do some iteration on that. Our first version of the feet weren't quite buff enough, you know, yeah. not quite intimidating enough. <laughs> but aside from that, you know, all, all jokes aside, um, one of the toughest things for us always is just trying to figure out the right balance of content for every, any given patch. Okay. And uh, so, you know, with this patch, we've been trying to figure out, well, you know, how many raid bosses should it be? And, and you know, what kind of content are we going to have for the solo player or for, you know, people that like five-man content, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. in, in having to cover all of these various, like, wide kinds of play styles and, and players and areas of the game that you need to update, what's your general patching philosophy in World of Warcraft? Right. What do you try to accomplish with each of right. these patches? Our general patching philosophy is that we don't want any given player to have to wait too long before they get some new content that's interesting to them. and so. Like I was just saying, one of the hardest things is balancing the right amounts of the content for different types of players out there. And, um, you know, in this case, the way that our philosophy has taken us is that we want to make sure that, that, you know, raiders who have been raiding the current tier of content uh, from now until 4.2 uh, are, are really, really get a lot of cool new stuff. Right. Um, and at the same time, we know that our players that do Dungeon Finder on a nightly basis, mm -hmm. they really chew through content very quickly. Yeah. So we need new stuff for them to do too. Right, keeping those players interested is always, yeah. always a really big exactly. goal. Exactly. Yeah. And now we're here with Dave Kozak, the lead quest designer for World of Warcraft, here to talk with us a little bit about what kind of quests are coming forth in the Firelands. So Dave, what, what can we expect players to see coming Great. into this patch? So what we're doing is we're creating a whole uh, quest hub in the Firelands. Uh, that you can unlock through through play and really trying to create an experience uh, and it's what I like to call personal progression okay. uh, in the same way that the Isle of Keldanas was uh, right, with sort Sunwell. of a, sure, right sure. with the Sunwell it was sort of a story that progressed but it progressed on, on a server-wide basis mm -hmm. this is a story that you as an individual will progress through daily questing and right? that, would, that would also mean that all of the individual players will get to experience a hundred percent of this content exactly rather than only catching exactly it. and and you know we put it in the firelands because I really wanted people to feel like they're engaged in the story like you're also helping uh, take the firelands and you're actually in the defensive position you're helping the guardians of okay. Hydal to uh, create a fortification uh, within the firelands that will help them keep watch on the firelands and prevent anything like that from happening again like uh, Ragnaros came and burned Hydal 
They want to stop that from ever happening again. Whatever happens after Ragnaros is dead, they're going to be ready. They're going to have an outpost there. Okay, and you're helping them build that outpost. Exactly. And, progress through that. and so with personal progression, you actually see that outpost get built. Uh, you'll you'll start in uh, Mount Hydral, uh, and it's important to note players will have to uh, they'll have to complete the Mount Hydral zone up to the regrowth, uh, okay. where they actually push back Ragnaros's forces, regrow the mountain. And then you're going to have uh, some daily quests open up at level 85 uh, that can help you uh, go on the defensive there, uh, uh, take back the forest, and then actually open up a portal into the Firelands and uh, with the, uh, the uh, Guardians of Hydra, I'll go in. And what you start with in the Firelands is really it's just a pile of rocks is mm -hmm. your quest hub. You kind of have to build a beachhead there and, uh, and take that over, turn that into a quest hub. And over the next few weeks of questing, you actually build up that quest hub. You'll get additional NPCs there, uh, and you'll see it sort of evolve. And so within that growth, you're not mm -hmm. going to end up necessarily grinding the same quests repeatedly. It no. sounds like there's quite yeah. a variety coming e from Exactly. Players. We have, uh, I think, at, at current count, and this might change before it goes live, but at current count, there's uh, over 60 quests, 60 daily quests. That's, no that's quite a bit of variety. Right. Yeah. That's basically half a zone of content, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it's randomized. And it's also randomized with progression. So you'll do, you'll do these daily quests in clusters the same way you would uh, uh, if you were questing an outdoor zone. So you'll, you'll do a couple of daily quests here, unlock a couple, like three daily quests over here, and they'll all be related to each other. So you kind of do all three at once, and then you unlock some kind of big finish over here. So you really kind of progress through. E even on a daily basis, you're doing some progression, kind of fighting your way through the zone. Uh, I think it should feel pretty cool for players. It should be something different, you know? It's yeah. not just grinding the same five dailies. You're, you're really right. you're right. seeing progression. Story-wise, what you're trying to do is, is build up uh, what we call the Sentinel Tree. Okay. Um, so druids couldn't exist in the Firelands. It's a really harsh environment. Mm -hmm. So you're really trying to create a shelter there that druids can be permanently stationed okay. at. Uh, so you're you're growing a, a tree. It's kind of uh, it's got its roots in Azeroth through the portal, and that tree will grow until the hub is like fully fleshed out. It's this enormous magical tree that's kind of providing a shelter underneath its, its right, branches. And so, and so in effect, along with the the player's progression, grows this tree for exactly, for the exactly. Through. And uh, we try one of our design goals. We try very hard to make it. It's not phasing, so it's not that if you and I are doing dailies mm -hmm. together. Uh, it's it's not you've progressed farther, so I can't see you, and we can't do dailies together. Uh, what we're really trying to do is make it so it's it's an individual experience. So uh, you and I will be in the same hub. I'll see how far I've progressed, mm -hmm. and you'll see how far you've progressed, and it'll look differently to us. But we'll basically be in the same place together. And if we want to do some of the dailies together, we can. We can go adventuring oh. together. Yeah, that's really Perfect. important for us, is we didn't want to make it a, a separate experience. So it's. Yeah, it should, it should work out. Cool. Fingers crossed. Very yeah. experimental. We're trying a bunch of new things, but I think it'll be very cool. All right, and so with this mm -hmm. progression, players are going to be able to earn certain things working through these quest right. hubs as well. So what can players expect to earn uh, for right. themselves? You, uh, uh, so as you unlock the tree, you're also unlocking vendors at the tree. And there's some gear there. There's some gear that'll, uh, you know, player power gear that'll help you, uh, you gear up. So you can kind of prioritize how you unlock the quest hub so that you kind of steer toward the gear that you want. Uh, there's also a bonus for unlocking the entire quest hub, for finishing the whole experience and, and getting the entire tree. We have a special uh, flaming hippogriff mount. Uh, it really, it's very, very cool. We've kind of had that in our back pocket for a while. We're like, players should do something really special to earn this. And that's what it is. There'll be an achievement for unlocking the entire hub. And as part of that achievement, you'll also get this mount. So there's, there's a whole lot of incentives to kind of keep you, keep you involved. And now I'm here with Corey Stockton, the lead content designer for World of Warcraft, here to talk a little bit more about Rage of the Firelands and who's going to be joining Ragnaros in this upcoming raid. So, Corey, we've heard a little bit about Ragnaros getting retrofitted for this upcoming 4.2 patch. What can you tell us about the people that are going to be joining him? Well, that's one of the cool things about Firelands is that it's, a, it's got a little bit of a retro feel to it with uh, players getting a chance to fight Ragnar skin, which is one of our you know, most popular raid bosses we've ever had. Um, but he's coming back with a whole new crew of guys uh, for players to fight against. There's going to be seven total bosses in the raid, and I think what's cool about it is we've got a lot of variety. Okay. Uh, we've got a, a spider boss, we've got a flying uh, firehawk, we've got a magma giant, um, and one of the really cool new things is we've actually got a, a completely new kind of a faction that's okay. uh, come to be for specifically for Firelands, which is uh, the Druids of the Flame. Um, and what's cool about this is it actually uses one of our really popular characters, uh, Fandral Staghelm, ends up being the leader 
of this faction. So for most of the players, uh, they might have met him before in questing and they've known about him, mm -hmm. but they're going to have this ultimate reveal. Oh, okay, interesting. So players have, have some, some twists to look forward to. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the things that's really cool about this is there's a lot of story that mm -hmm. goes along with Firelands Raid, as well as the loot and the encounters and everything else that players are sure, involved sure, with. Because everybody needs the shinies in addition to that story. Exactly. We all know what's most important uh -huh. in the end. So one of the things we wanted to do is try to get some more vanity items. Okay. Um, in general, we always have items that um, their, their quality goes up, so they're stronger. Mm -hmm. But here we wanted to do something that just felt really cool. So a couple examples um, on Fandral Staghelm himself, he drops a staff that actually allows the player to convert into his feral forms. And what's cool is these feral forms are completely brand new for the raid here. He's got a magma cat form. Looks really awesome, and players will be able to get staff convert into that at any time. Another example would be Ragnaros. Um, one of his most famous item drops he's always had has been Sulfurus. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and upgraded, created a whole new model for Sulfurus, and it's going to end up dropping off of Ragnaros in both the heroic mode and in the normal mode. Oh, wow, awesome. So we'll see a bunch of people smashing around with Rag's Hammer. For sure. Around. You'll definitely be able to see these people that you know for sure that they've cleared Firelands mm -hmm. and they've made it through just by looking at their items. Good, and prestige is important. It is. It's one of the biggest things in WoW, so we wanted to make sure that, that people you know, felt fulfilled by the items, not just from the quality level, but on that vanity side, too. And now moving into the Firelands raid, I've heard that players are going to be able to choose the first encounter, so there, there will be a little bit of a, a different start to this one. They are. That's one of the things that we always kind of like to play with a little bit, is having an encounter that's uh, non-linear versus linear. We wanted to make sure that players had a little bit of choice here. So when they come in, um, they have an option to do any of those first four bosses. The way the zone is actually laid out is there's a bridge leading to Sulfuron Keep, which is where Ragnaros mm -hmm. is. So when you start out, you're in an open outdoor area. You can kind of wander around and find those four different bosses and fight them in whatever order you want before you head into the keep to take on Ragnaros. And for players delving into this new raid, they're going to have a lot of new content to try to digest, a lot of fights to learn. Now I hear that there's a tool being added in 4.2 to help players tackle this content. Can you tell us a little more about that? The tool is called the Encounter Journal, um, and it's something we've actually been working on for a long time. We're really passionate about it. And it's essentially, and you kind of look at it as we, when we redid the quest map for players mm -hmm. and we kind of gave them an idea of where to go and uh, what to do, but we didn't give them all the exact details. Right. That's what we're looking at with the encounter journal, is it's not a strategy guide for the, the individual encounter fights, but it's a more of a, an information for you, almost like a wiki a little bit. Okay. If you were to take one of these bosses, let's take Fandral Staghelm, for example, mm -hmm. um, you would see all of his individual abilities and what they do, but we wouldn't give you the strategy on, like, say, how to avoid it right, or maybe to how to plan. Exactly. Like that, sure. But we'd at least let you know that uh, he has an AE ability mm -hmm. and it's going to do this. Sure. How you deal with it is up to you. What's cool about that is that's only one part of the encounter journal. Um, the okay. other part of it is that it lists all the loot. And that's what we found is probably the main thing when players want to know something about mm -hmm. a boss fight or an encounter, they, they leave WoW and go to the web to try to find that information. Right. We really would love for them to stay in the game and be able to have that <laughs> you know, available right there, similar to what happened with the quest, mm -hmm. the quest log once we made that change. Yeah. So now players are going to be able to see all the loot from every boss. They can sort the loot by 10 player, 25 player. You can even sort it by your class. So you see that loot just specifically for you. You can link it to friends, and you can do this from anywhere. It doesn't, you don't have to be in the instance to have accessibility to this. You could use it standing in Stormwind, in Orgrimmar, wherever you want. Well, that's perfect. That'll help all those players that have that, that last slot to fill find out exactly where they need to go. Yeah, that's, that's part of the point is that I think it'll, it'll kind of instigate some sharing between players mm -hmm. who, you know, when they're in a guild, like, hey, I'm really looking for this item. Uh, maybe we could get people together to fight this guy because we know it's on this boss specifically. Thanks for joining us for BlizzCast 16. I'd like to thank Tom, Dave, and Corey for stopping by to tell us a little bit more about Patch 4.2 and what's coming with Rage of the Firelands. We'll see you next time.